In this video, I will show you how to use an external real-time clock module to display the current date and time on an LCD screen using an Arduino. I also have the Arduino programmed to cycle which LED is on once every 20 seconds just for the purposes of having a faster demonstration in this video, but this is also a great way to make custom alarms or devices that depend on time like an automatic medication dispenser. A quick note that I am demonstrating this with the older Arduino Uno R3. The newer Arduino R4 has a built-in real-time clock, so you do not need one of these external modules. We have a separate video about that in our Arduino tutorial playlist linked in the description. Let's zoom in and take a look at the module. I am using one made by Adafruit. This is a breakout board for the DS3231 real-time clock chip. So there are different real-time clock chips and different breakout boards made by different manufacturers. So if you buy a different one, you will need to check the documentation for the board you bought for both the hardware pinout and for the software library, which we will get to later. This breakout board by Adafruit has eight pins. You only need to use four of them to use the chip, the VN pin for power, that's going to be 5 volts from the Arduino, the GND or ground pin for ground, that's going to connect connected to ground on your Arduino, and then the SCL and SDA pins, which are going to communicate by connecting them to the SCL and SC SDA pins on your Arduino. These four other pins are going to have different functionality, I'll talk about that documentation later, but they are not mandatory to use. One nice feature of some of these breakout boards is that they come with a battery backup. So there is a slot on the back of the board for a CR1220 coin cell battery, and that is going to continue to power the real-time clock chip even if your Arduino loses power. So if you have a power outage or you unplug your Arduino and move it somewhere else, then you do not need to worry about manually setting the time. The chip will automatically keep track of the time, and then the time will still be correct the next time your Arduino reboots. I'm going to demonstrate that here, but first I'm going to note as far as the hardware in this video is concerned, we do have a separate video about these LCD screens. You can see they have a lot of connections, so I'm not going to go over all of the wiring for those again in this video. Again, you can find that video in our Arduino tutorial playlist linked in the description of this one. Not going to tell you how to wire up the screen, but again, quickly looking at the wiring for this breakout board. I have VN and ground pins that are going to the power and ground buses on my breadboard. And then the SCL and SDA pins from the breakout board are going over here, if I get some wires out of the way, to the SCL and SDA pins on my Arduino. I also have a couple LEDs wired. Again, it's just automatically cycling through these once every 20 seconds. We have another video about how to connect LEDs with a current limiting resistor. So again, not going to describe that. The focus of this video is on this real-time clock breakout. Zooming out again to demonstrate the battery backup, as you can see here, it is 11.22 and just over 40 seconds, and this is not an April Fool's joke, even though I am filming this on April 1st. So if I go ahead and unplug power, say right when I hit 50 seconds, and count to 10-ish slowly, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, when I plug it back in, you should see that instead of picking up exactly where it left off, I have now rolled over to the next minute. So that was the battery backup on the real-time clock, helping it continue to keep time even though the Arduino lost power. Let's switch over to the computer and take a look at the code. Now remember that I bought this specific breakout board for this specific chip, the Adafruit DS3231 Precision RTC Breakout. And their documentation has instructions to download their library with a note that says this code is actually forked from somebody else's library, so please only use theirs to make sure it is compatible. So remember, if you bought a different breakout board from a different manufacturer, you may need to install a different library. You cannot use the exact same code that I am about to show you in this video. The manufacturer's documentation will also tell you about those other pins. So again, I mentioned that you only need four pins to use this, the VN, ground, SCL, and SDA pins. But there's some other documentation on the Adafruit website here about what all of those other pins do. I'm not going to go through that now. But if you want to know what the other pins do and you need to use them for something, you can check the manufacturer's documentation for that. Now let's switch over to the Arduino IDE and take a look at the code. Quick reminder before we do that, you will probably need to install a custom library for the board you bought. You can do that by going up here to either sketch, include library, 
manage libraries or clicking this little book icon for the library on the left where you can search for the library you need to install. But again, if I just search for RTC, you can see there are lots of real-time clock libraries written by different people for different hardware. So make sure you are installing the library for the board that you purchased. Going through the code, which you can download from the link in the description, First, we make sure to include both the libraries we'll be using. That includes the Liquid Crystal library and the RTC library from Adafruit in my case. There is then a bunch of setup code that initializes both the Liquid Crystal display and some stuff for the real-time clock. I am also defining variables for the different times, so year, month, day, hour, minutes, and seconds, and for the pins I'm going to use to control those LEDs. In the setup function, I have pretty standard stuff for LEDs using the pin mode command to set the LED pins as outputs, and then using digital write to make sure they are low initially. I tell the Arduino how many characters the LCD screen has, so I have 16 columns and two rows. And then there is some stuff from the Adafruit example code to detect if the RTC is connected or if it loses power or has lost power when the Arduino boots up, because remember when your Arduino starts, it's always going to run this setup function. So we're detecting if the RTC lost power the last time. In the loop function, we get the current time from the RTC, and then I am storing those in a bunch of separate variables to make them a little easier to access. And then we're gonna go ahead and display those on the LCD screen. So set the cursor to the top left corner First, print out the date. I am printing it in month slash day slash year format, but you can move these around if you would like to rearrange that. And one note, I am checking if either the month or the day are less than 10, I print an extra leading space before that single digit number. So that helps keep the spacing consistent such that I'm always using two digits for both the day and two digits for the month. And things don't get weird on the LCD screen when you switch from one digit to two or then roll back over, for example, from December to January of the next year. You don't have to do that if you don't want to print those extra spaces, but then you would need to modify the code a bit so you don't have dangling characters at the end of the date or weird things getting overwritten. Not going to go through that example. You can just copy my code like this and then modify as you see fit. Next up, we print the time in hour, minute, second format. I move the cursor of the LCD to the second row and then do something similar I did with the date. If the hour is less than 10, I print an extra leading space. But if the minutes or seconds are less than 10, I print an extra leading zero. So for example, if it is nine minutes past the hour, that should show as zero nine on a digital clock and not just nine. Same thing for the seconds. If it is five seconds, that should show as zero five and not just five. Finally, I have the code to control the LEDs based on the time. This is just a simple series of if statements, checking if the seconds are equal to a certain value and then setting a certain LED high while the other LEDs are low. And again, I made this happen pretty fast just for the sake of having a demonstration I could show in this video without waiting for hours. But if you wanted an alarm to go off at a certain time of day or even just on a certain date, you could adjust the condition here in the if statement. One caveat about that is that your code is going very, very fast. It's going to go through this loop more than once a second. So technically, while these seconds are zero, this condition will still be true the next time the code goes through the loop, since this loop is going to happen more than once a second. For the example I have here, that doesn't really matter because pin LED1 is already high, so telling it to go high again doesn't do anything. But if you have more complicated code in here, and you only want that code to happen once per day, for example, then you would need to modify the code so it keeps track of when this condition has happened once so it doesn't happen again on the next loop. Again, I will leave that as an exercise for the viewer. I'm not gonna demonstrate that in this video, but if you are just doing something simple like controlling LEDs as I am here, then it doesn't really matter. To summarize, remember that you can download this code from the link in the description. That might have been a lot to absorb in this video, but make sure you take the time to read through the code and read the comments so you understand how it works. This will help you get started with what I demonstrated in this video, but you can modify it as needed for your project. Remember that you can find the rest of our Arduino tutorials for things like the LCD screen and LEDs linked in the description of this video. 
You can also find a list of cool science projects you can do with an Arduino, and for over a thousand other projects in all areas of science and engineering, not just electronics, check out the rest of our YouTube channel and our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.